Chicken soup is an age-old folk remedy for many an ailment, and says our Nancy Giles, for many a good reason. At the first sign of sniffles, what do you do? Take two aspirin and go to bed? Jug some cold medicine? Perhaps, but some say the best cure is one of the oldest and the tastiest. Why do they consider it Jewish penicillin? I mean, are there particular properties that, that can help with a cold? When I was making soup the other day, there was something about the aroma of chicken soup, and it just felt good. And when, I'm, when I have a cold, it's the first thing that I'll get. Joan Nathan is a cookbook author and historian, who some call the Jewish Julia Child. She says chicken soup has been on the menu for centuries. The first recorded mention of chicken soup was somebody named Discorides, who was an army surgeon general in Rome. But then later, Maimonides, who was a Jewish philosopher, a scientist, and he said that chicken soup was a panacea for so many different things. Asthma, weight gain like bone soup is today, leprosy. Since Maimonides' time, chicken soup has been prescribed by grandmothers and doctors alike. But many believe there really is evidence to support the prescription. As chicken cooks, it releases an amino acid resembling properties in medicine used to fight infections such as bronchitis. And in 2000, a study found that chicken soup may also reduce inflammation. Less inflammation equals fewer symptoms. It smells so good, I can feel it go right to the core of my stomach. Our love for chicken soup is universal. But there are as many recipes as there are countries where it's eaten. In Greece, lemon and egg are added to chicken broth. In Thailand, plenty of lime juice and coconut. Southerners add dumplings. And for Jews, matzo balls. So matzo balls started out being made from the actual matzah, and now are they made from like matzah meal? Manischewitz came along and put out a cookbook for when they made matzah meal. And the cookbook talked about heavenly Alsatian balls. They didn't call it matzo balls. Th that's when they really became part of American culture through commercialism and through people wanting to do things a little bit easier. Traditionally, the matzo ball was served at Passover, the Jewish holiday commemorating the Israelites' freedom from Egypt, which began last night. Do you have a preference, fluffy or dense? Fluffy. The fluffier the matzo ball, that is the ultimate. You should take a spoon and be able to right. put it on your spoon, but it needs to be air. David Tafe is the executive chef at New York's Second Avenue Deli, where they've been ladling chicken soup and matzo balls into bowls since opening in 1954. I'll tell you the secret, using schmaltz, chicken fat. Schmaltz my brother, is chicken fat. Yeah, my brother had a saying, he said, anyone who use, makes matzo balls, not what's schmaltz, it's an assimilated matzo ball. And deli owner Jack Liebwall would know. These matzo balls are the lucky ones. After cooking, they'll join their mate, chicken soup. What makes this soup so iconic? Quality of the chicken we use, the amount of bones that mm -hmm. we use, and just less is more. Mm -hmm. Less is more. But what the soup lacks in ingredients, it more than makes up for in history, tradition, and family. 